Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How Twos. We're going to talk today about troubleshooting T1s, ISDN trunks, tie trunks, you know, PRIs, however the nomenclature you want to call it. But um, I'm going to give you the basics and kind of some tactics that you want to that you want to keep handy when you're troubleshooting T1s with your carriers because there's two parts to this. There's your part and their part. All right, so your part's pretty easy. Their part's pretty difficult because you're usually up against, you know, it's a challenge for us customers dealing with the carriers because 99% of the time they're telling you that we don't see any trouble, okay? But you gotta be able to prove to them without a doubt and stand your ground that you do see a trouble and you've identified that it is not your gear, okay? I'm gonna show you how to prove this, all right? So uh, a typical T1 trunk, and I'm showing you an 8300 here, but this, this obviously translates to any type of T1 or PRI trunk. And uh, for, for ease of, ease of discussion here let's just talk PRI okay because the PRIs run on T1s and T1s are essentially 24 channels of, of you know 64 kilobit channel voice channel okay but T1s can transport anything they can transport data they can transport voice they can transport video so but we're just talking voice so anyway here's the 8300 in a G700 stack, and you can see there's a uh, 711 here that that has a T1 connection that goes to the central office, which goes to the PSTN, which in turn goes to your CO office. And as you can see here, this is Verizon's headquarters on UU Net Drive. <laughs> I guess that's kind of like a Via's um, Oryx Pecos Drive. Anyway, so uh, this is how it connects. PSTN central office to your gear. Now, this is a very simplified view, okay? Because in between here, you're going to have a CSU, you're going to have an NIU, and your NIU is usually where it stops, okay? So, uh, give you a graphic here. You have your PBX gear, you have your CSU, you have your NIU, and then you have your central office, okay, the wiring to the central office. Now, the NIU is usually where you stop, okay? That's the customer terminating end point. That, that's, that's where you end. Your connection, your cable plugs into that NIU. That NIU is, is maintained and supported by the carrier, whoever it may be, AT&T, Verizon, Quest, whoever, right? Okay, so your responsibility is up to that point. Uh, there's always the circumstance where you may buy end-to-end -end maintenance where they extend your circuits to your DMARC or extend from your DMARC to your suite and they maintain that. If you have that, great. But at least I'm showing you the troubleshooting skills that you can troubleshoot from your PBX to the NIU to prove that it's not your gear. Okay. Now, on the PBX. As you can see here, I have a Definity, this is an 8720, um, with a DS1 board, and I purposely have an alarm on here, but you can see there's a failure, okay? Anytime you have a failure, you need to investigate your side first, okay? Always, always, always investigate your side first. The first thing you need to do is either test your trunk or test your board um, where you think the faulty problem is. And once you do that, you're gonna get a failure or you're gonna get an error codes, whatever those may be. Um, so uh, kind of a starting point, test your PBX, okay? Test your PBX, test your gear, make sure everything's good there. Um, and then test your cabling after that part. But if you see a failure in here, this is gonna lead you down the path of where to investigate. And how to do this is you need to get familiar with the documentation. Now the documentation I'm specifically speaking of is the Avaya Aura documentation. Let me show you how to get there, okay? First, go download your version of whatever it is, okay? So I have 5.2, it could be 6.0, it could be 3.0, it could be whatever, okay? So I go in here and I go down here, start, here okay start start here this is going to load up in an internet explorer window let me bring this into view okay you click on a via or a communication manager you scroll down to supporting and you see maintenance alarms for a via or a communication manager open that okay once you open that it's going to bring you into the alarms document and as you see here, this is a 1700 page document. This is the document I live and die by when I'm troubleshooting anything in the Avaya PBXs, okay? Hint, hint, <laughs> get familiar with this document because in here you're gonna, have, you're gonna have your maintenance object repair procedures and you're gonna have your maintenance demand test. Maintenance procedures are based on 
uh, the objects. And as you can see here, they're labeled alphabetically. And if we go back into the PBX, you're going to see UDS1 board. Okay, so we want to look that one up. So I'm going to minimize this. Uh, da -da -da -da. Hang on. All right, sorry about that. Uh, we're going to scroll down to UDS1 board. Keep going, keep going. There we go. UDS1 board. Now, this is something I used to yell at technicians all the time when I was in tier three, is that do the do your tests. Do everything you need to do to investigate the problem before you escalate. Okay, that's, that's the same thing when you want to deal with the carriers because if you call the carriers and say, hey, I have a trouble with my circuit, they're going to ask you for information and if you don't have it, they're, they're going to start leaning towards that it's something on your end. Okay, that's the mindset that they're getting in. But if you set the mindset correctly right at the get-go, you tell them, look, I've tested everything. I need to do intrusive slash non-intrusive type testing on my circuit. Okay, because they're going to ask you, usually, if they want, if they're allowed to do uh, intrusive testing on your circuit, you can tell them yes or no. But if the circuit's down, it's not going to matter. They can do intrusive testing. So anyway, back to the US UDS-1 board. And as you can see, 139 fails. Okay, Get used to these test numbers. Get used to the results and any error codes because the error codes are going to give you more detailed information. Okay, Got that? All right, so UDS-1 board. Let's scroll down. Test board location, and that's what we did. You can see that there's, there's a few different types. You know, this gives you a ton of information on how to identify it. So I'm going to keep scrolling down till I get to the errors. And it talks about all the different line codes, the build outs, all this stuff. All right. So as we continue going, I'm going to go down to the test. It's easier. You can see I have a blue alarm inquiry test, number 139. All right. Because that's the one that failed. See, 139 failed. So I'm getting a blue alarm, getting all ones condition. So if I click on that, it's going to tell me exactly what's going on. All right. The blue alarm is a signal sent by the remote DS1 endpoint when it's out of service. So that tells me the carrier has their circuit out of service and they're sending me an all ones condition. Okay. So that's when you tell the carrier, hey, look, something's going on. You're sending me an all ones condition. You're sending me a blue alarm or I have a blue alarm on my side. We need to figure out what's going on on your side. Okay. So at least you're sending them down the right path to be able to identify where that issue is. Now, if you're getting that, one way to find out whether or not it's you or your wiring is you can hook up, as you can see here, you can hook up a loopback jack. You can unplug, and, and the wire colors may vary, but this is usually what they look like. You can find them in telephone rooms, they're usually hanging around. You can make one too, they're very easy to make. I have hundreds of them. Um, maybe I'll show you a video on how to make these things because they're really easy. But one, two, four, and five are the pins that T1s ride on. And as you can see here, how to create this is you put pins one to four, two to five. Okay. Once you plug this in, if you plug this into your gear, if you plug this in to the uh, the um, the circuit pack, or you know, in in this case, if you plug it in right to here, and you test you go ahead and test that board, that 139 is going to pass. That way you can identify the fact that it's not your board, your board's not having a problem. And then you can also take this loopback jack, this one here, you can take this loopback jack, find a, a coupler, and you can unplug the your circuit from the NIU, from the network interface unit. You can unplug it from the network interface unit and plug that loopback jack onto it. Um, then you test again. If your test passes, you know that your circuit end to end on in your what, what you support is working just fine okay um, so once you've identified that and you can tell your carrier hey look i've plugged in a loop back jack for my nau back to my pbx and everything passes everything passes fine it's got to be something on your end it's either going to be cabling or it's got to be framing or something programmed on your side that you have the circuit busied out okay so what you can do for them is then take that loopback jack, this one here, take this loopback jack and plug it into the NIU directly, right into the circuit port where your circuit plugs into. Okay, then you can tell them, hey, test all the way up. I have a loopback jack plugged into your NIU. And if they can't see it, if they cannot see that loop, then they know for a fact that something's wrong uh, in, their, in their span between the NIU and their gear and between the CO, 
All right, so then they can dispatch a tech and they can find out, oh, look, yeah, we had some bad cables and we, oops, sorry, I dropped some pennies. Um, we, uh, we, we've, we've repaired the cables, everything's back up and running. If you plug it back in and your circuit comes back up, you're good to go, okay? But to recap quickly here, let me minimize this. That's the, that's the Verizon headquarters CEO. All right, so um, get used to the documentation. First and foremost, test your board. Always, always, always test your board. Um, then identify if there's any errors or any any failures on your alarms. Okay. Uh, then go in and identify in the documentation under the under the 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 um, <sighs> the component you're testing off of. And as you can see here, UDS1BD, UDS1BD, demand tests. Okay. As you can see here, 138, 139, 140, 141, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's those tests. And if you click on the one that's failing, it's gonna tell you exactly what you need to do and how to, how to identify where the problem is. Okay, once you do that, then you start checking the physical layer. You start checking the physical connections. That's when the loopback jack comes in handy and you plug in the loopback jack to your gear, which could be in this port here on the 8300 if you have the, the DS1 card or if you have uh, a TM464 or the DS1 card for your Definity, and on the back is a C you have a CSU, and that CSU could be a, a different kind. You could have an AdTrans CSU like this, which is an external, um, which would hook directly up, or you have a 120A, which is the type, the integrated CSU that plugs on the back of the um, uh, back of this circuit pack. Okay. Um, but you usually find those ad trends like plugged onto the 8300s or an IP office. I use those for IP office. Okay. But anyway, um, but once you identify what type of gear you have and you plug the loopback jacks in and you test end to end, end from your PBX to the NIU network interface unit, and you can see that everything passes when you have the loopback jack in, you have now ammo to go to your carriers and, and tell them, look, here's what I tested. Here's what I identified as the potential problem. Um, it could be a framing on your side, but I do see the circuits out of service on your end. Um, and usually, they can get things, you know, they can get things repaired pretty quickly. Um, if there's a problem in, uh, let's say, there's a physical problem. Let's say there's cables that are bad. There's waterlogged, you know, a pop that that the cables go into. Um, it's usually going to take a day or so to get fixed, especially if they dig through a cable or some animal chews through wires, which yes, has happened. Um, they're going to get those, excuse me, they're going to get those repaired. And once they get those repaired and your circuit's back up and running, you're good to go. Okay. But understanding what you need to do to identify and is isolate the trouble for your, your circuit is what is key. All right. So, um, I hope this is informative. I know this was very brief. Um, but if you need detailed information on how to isolate a T1, don't hesitate to leave me comments, questions. Um, if you have specific circumstances that you want me to go into detail on a video for T1s, let me know. I will talk about them. I will also talk about, you know, I can talk about the different types of uh, connections that are out there, et cetera, et cetera. How to, how to cable up a T1. Oh, <laughs> cabling. This is crucial. Make sure your cabling is shielded. Yes, I know you can say, oh, AG45 cables are just fine. But I tell you right now, a shielded cable is going to save you a lot of headache, especially when you're dealing with carriers when they ask you that question, is this cable shielded end to end? If you say no, they're going to tell you, okay, can't help you too much, but it, it's, it's highly recommended and suggested that your cables are shielded end to end because they have protected gear. All their gear is protected and grounded, and that's what the purpose of the shield is, okay? So shielded cables aren't that much. They're not that expensive. Go get them. Um, but that's just me. That's me being me and, and saying that, you know, if you don't have a shielded cable, that's another point that the carriers can look at and say, you know, that that's probably one of your problems because you have something that's shorting out your cable, okay? But anyway. With that, I leave you this little, little tidbit. All right, all right, I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. Yes, I'm a gamer sometimes, but hey, what can I say? I like being funny, and I like keeping you guys on your, on your toes.
So, uh, like, comment, uh, any questions you have, don't, or don't, <laughs> feel free to message me on YouTube, find me on Twitter, PBX How Tos, or you can email me at cj at pbxhowtos.com, and I'll be happy to respond to anything you guys may have. Alrighty, I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. I will talk to you all later. See ya.